I'm so excited to be here with a couple of kindred spirits of mine, Richard and Kylie. Um, so they have a ton of experience with um, helping businesses launch, you know, courses and websites and, you know, group programs and things like that. Um, they have uh, 15 plus years of experience uh, doing over 250 launches. So uh, way more experience than me. And uh, I mean, these are, they have some, some major clients, including, you know, Eckhart Tolle, uh, Sounds True, Jack Canfield, Marianne Williamson, um, Tara Brock, and, and others. And um, so I'm just really looking forward to you know, picking their brain a little bit here, their, their brains here a little bit about launches and how to make it successful. Um, the other thing that's very important is that um, they, they are, their business is called Conscious Marketer. They have a great Facebook group too. Be sure to check it out. I'll link it below. And so that's why I feel like we're kindred spirits because not only do we um, understand uh, the importance of marketing and, and how to do launches, et cetera, but but to do it in a way that's um, aligned with values and uh, soul, spirit, et cetera. So um, Kylie and Richard, great to have you both here. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. Thanks, George. Great, yeah. great, great to be here. Totally. So I, um, there's so much we could, we could spend you know, days <laughs> talking through different aspects of um, conscious marketing, but you had uh, three skills that I wanted to, to have you kind of touch on and, and uh, in our short time together um, for launching well, basically. And uh, I'll probably have questions for you along the way, but um, do either of you uh, wanna start with that? Well, maybe I can provide the, the framework for how sure. these skills came that's about, great. and then yeah. I'll pass it over to Kylie who'll give you the first skill. Oh yeah, yeah, um, that sounds great, yeah. So we do, we do, um, we do about 30 ish launches a year. And then we help, um, wow. hundreds of other peoples in our, in our group programs. Uh, I think last year we sold over 250,000 units. That's just last year. That's a lot, a lot of programs being sold. Um, yeah. just to kind of give you the scope. And, uh, we help a lot of people who are kind of just getting off the ground and also people who are more established. Uh, but for people who are kind of doing it with us or, and learning to launch themselves, uh, what we found is that if we can teach them these three core skills, then they're off to the races. So it'd be kind of like if you wanted to do a play basketball and you didn't learn how to dribble the ball first, or you didn't learn how to, uh, shoot a free throw. And so these three skills, uh, are things that you can teach yourself. And this is what we do in our group training programs, but, um, it, it's really useful to know that you need these. And the nice thing is you can learn these, you can learn the basics of these in a couple hours. And then once you have that, then no matter what you're doing with your launch or with your programs or with your marketing, whether it's like your Facebook feed or you're shooting a video or you're doing an interview like this, you can, you, you can, you can rise above everybody else because you have some basic fundamentals that nobody else has. And so I'm going to pass it to Kylie here, who is going to share the first one for with you. Absolutely. Awesome. So Richard referred to it earlier as conscious hooks. And we were talking amongst our team just even this morning about the idea of a conscious hook versus a versus clickbait, which you don't thankfully see as much now. But for those of you who don't know, next time you're at the grocery store, just look to the left in the line and you're going to see a lot of clickbait. So it's a good example, but a lot of people in the transformational industries, I call it, don't even like the word hook. They're like, oh, that feels manipulative. So I looked it up because I like it. So I looked it up in the dictionary one day and I found out that it actually means to attach. So I really, really appreciate that aspect of what a hook can be. But essentially, it's just the art of getting attention. You know, one, one guy in our podcast, Garrett, called it Stop the Scroll. So with billions and billions of pieces of content being uploaded to social platforms every single day, how is the beauty and the amazingness and the depth of what you're doing, how is that then getting people to not just stop and pay attention, but want to stop and pay attention, which is a totally different thing altogether. And so I have nine ways that I've come up with over the 10 years that I've been a copywriter. One of them, I'll just give you one of them real quickly, and we'll also talk about that in a minute. But one of them is, can you tell a story in a sentence? Can you actually get 
a story and a sentence to where it shows the beginning of a transformational arc all the way to an end of one, but it attaches a face to it. It attaches a name to it. It attaches a real human to it. That's usually the best hook. That's the hook I've used the most in ads. And it does get people interested and intrigued to learn more. Um, is there a example that comes to mind for you? Maybe there's something you recently wrote. And um, if not, you know, we can always put the link below to an example of a recent ad. Yeah. Absolutely. So the first ad I ever wrote and the first campaign I ever worked on was about a was about a psychotherapist who couldn't get any clients, was living in her parents' basement, and then learned how to coach, became a transformational coach, and was able to build a lifestyle business and bring it to seven figures. And so, you know, that story has probably been a little played out since then. But even with stories that are quote unquote played out, when you put that name and you put that face and you put that picture and you put that scene, people do love it. And then Another ad I wrote for a client named Brendan Kane, a former client, was about how Brie, a tech struggling stay at home mom, was able to get 30,000 followers in six days. And that could, quote unquote, sound like clickbait. It's like, is that really true? Like, that sounds ridiculous. So the rest of the ad has to justify it. Like, yes, this actually happened. Here's how it happened. Here's the problems and challenges that she had on the way to making that happen. And here's why it, why it could be. We're not promising anything. Here's why it could happen for you too. So I love Brie. I talked to her on the phone. She's from Missouri. She was super cool. Just like, yeah, I can't even upload a photo. Yeah, I can't even plug in a computer. And and uh, I have that same problem. So I really related to her. Oh I was just, my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, I just, I love when Kylie tells stories because you just get drawn in. It's like, it's like effortless. Um, what I'd say also is just, um, the reason this is so important is because these things are embedded everywhere. And, and so, uh, so these hooks that draw you in, they're in the subject line of an email there, they get the click inside the email. And then once you get to the sales page, they're in, uh, you know, they're in the video, there should be video hooks and forward hooks and backward hooks, we have like a whole thing. And then and then every bullet point, if you're selling something should should have a hook. And so these things, it, it's, it's like grammar for sales, you know, or grammar for persuasion to get people interested so that they're going to want to go go deeper with you. Um, so even like the title of this, we named it the three core skills any marketer needs to create an extraordinary launch. So if you saw that in a title or in a video, you'd want to know what are those three things. And then when, because if, if you don't go in, the, I think the problem we solve with this is we have people have extraordinary programs, but they send an email and nobody opens the email, right? Or they open the email, but then if, it, if it's not written in a way that people click it, then they never go to see the offer or they go to the offer and it's written in a way that's maybe descriptive versus, um, you know, drawing people in and inviting them in. And so this really solves the problem of helping bring people into your program so you can create the transformation for them. Hmm. Amazing. Um, so the, the second core skill, what, what is that one? Maybe Kylie, you want to lead with this one because yeah, you're the master it. storyteller. So oh, uh, the, the second core skill is really how to tell your origin story. And so, this is, uh, Kylie's a, a master at this. Yeah, and I love what you said earlier, Richard, that um, it's owning your origin story also. And it's not just writing it, it's not just telling it, it's like having it in your body, having it in your spirit and really being able to say like, this is who I am, this is what I stand for. But usually I talk about origin stories in terms of how I earned the right to carry my medicine. And that's like what a, spiritual teacher of mine said one day, she's a Cherokee medicine woman. And she was like, how did you, you have to earn the right to carry your medicine. You don't just get to do it. So in terms of if our work is our medicine, then how did we put in those 10,000 hours to then say, Hey, I'm going to pass this on to you. I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to support you in this way. And so I think that's a really important thing. And I, I think also the origin story, which is simply just like, where did you come from? Who are you? How did you get good at what you do? But it also allows an audience to then connect with you because the way that I teach origin story at the very end of the story, you then bridge why you bridge a why. So, so 
after I share with you how I got great at what I'm doing, now I have to say why I care about you. Because if I don't say why I care about you, then why does it matter? You know, I watch you go through this great arc of transformation and, and so what? So it's really also about I'm doing this work today because I went through all of this. I learned all of this through my life experiences. Here's why I want to share it with you. Here's why it's actually very important to me to share it with you. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think also the, the, the origin story connects to, hopefully connects in some way to the, to the audience to say, that part I can relate to, or wow, that part is memorable, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, anything else, anything else about storytelling, Richard, that you want to mention? Just that, just that I think that, um, you know, it's something I've struggled with a little bit as an introvert. And I think that, you know, for your audience, I, I think if you're, if you're listening to this and you're saying to yourself, nobody cares about my story, which is pretty common actually, or my story is just average or whatever. What, what you need to realize is it's, it's normally not normally people actually care about your story and the backstory gives you people con gives, gives your audience a, uh, context for who you are and the story is you you're gonna have to retell a story over and over and over again in podcast or on Facebook or when somebody introduces you or and so you might as well get really good at it you know and rather than go weak and kind of mumble through it I think get really proficient at it because it's 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 in a lot of places and it's through stories that you can draw people in and then change their lives if you think of the people that you respect what's interesting is you normally know their origin story it's, and it's it's part of what it's part of why you're connected to them. So mm. yeah, yeah, makes them human. Makes them you know, um, it, it makes makes you more interested and invested. I think in their continuing journey, right? I think that's yep. Uh, that's how I feel about that. Mm. Um, so the third core skill is blocking content. I, I love to hear hear you share more about that because um, I'm a, a big fan of content marketing as well. Um, but uh, yeah, either of you want to take up, take that on. Uh, I'll, I'll lead with this one. Yeah, um, right. So uh, when kind of in the early days, this is like 2007, eight, when I had to start to do videos and these teachers would turn to me and say, what do I say? And I would start to block out um, the, the marketing videos for them basically. And um, what I realized was that it was kind of like uh, there were different types of blocks in a video. And like, so one block might be an authority block. Another block might be to tell your origin story. Another block might be a teaching block. Um, another block might be an intro. Another block might be to um, uh, mention the next video and set the hook for the next video in the series so that when they get the email, they're more likely to open it and they already know that they've already have a seed planted and so you get higher open rate and a higher watch rate on the next video. And so this is really kind of an interesting skill. I, I developed this uh, kind of in the late 2000s and then taught it. And uh, it's really it's a really unique way because once you have this skill, it makes uh, doing a video really easy, actually. And you, and you know that for everything, every every section of a video, there's a specific intent for that vi for that section. And then, and then you can learn the formulas for how things are ordered. And there's a, there's a better order and then there's a worse order. Uh, and uh, it makes recording videos easier. It makes the effectiveness of them uh, better. And then once you have the blocking, what you can realize is any website is just a series of blocks. You can realize a sales page is a series of blocks where each section has an intent. Uh, so we have, a, we have what we call a conscious offer formula that we teach in our programs that has 20 blocks. And so once you have this, you can start to look at everything in blocks. And then when you're reading an email, when you're watching a video, or when, when you're reviewing somebody else's sales page that you really respect, you can go, oh, that's a, that's a quote block. They've just quoted and brought some authority. Oh, that's a testimonial block. Oh, there's a case study block there. Oh, there's an offer summary block. And so you can kind of see that once you have all these pieces, it, it's kind of like putting on a uh, a nice pair of sunglasses. It changes how you see everything online, but it also helps you decode what everybody else is doing and it helps you get intentional on what you're doing. It's really an amazing method to, uh, to have under your belt. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's, um, 
it's I think for the for the person who's writing it or scripting a video, uh, it's probably more calming too. just, you know, instead of like, oh, my God, I could talk about anything, everything you know, to say, OK, well, no, there are these blocks that I can just kind of plug in, plug and play to say, OK, yeah. well, did I cover this? You know, of all the blocks, and I imagine you could choose from the blocks too. You know, depending on what uh, what you feel the the purpose of the video or the uh, sales page is. It's like, okay, let me choose this block. Oh, now, now I can I can write just to that. I, I call it temporary constraints. You know, it's like, <laughs> ah, okay, I can just write that. Yes, that that I can do instead of let's write a sales page. Yes. <laughs> well, what's so, interesting is when we record people, we often. You know, I mean, we've been kind of the Zoom world the last couple of years, but normally we're with like three digital cameras. And so we just go block by block and then we'll do that that first block like two or three times. And then with a zoom in or a change of camera, we just cut the next block in. And so it makes the video editing really easy. Um, and so you can when you put the blocks together and nobody does nobody's going to know that you didn't do that in one take if the editing is done right. And it looks like you look seamless and a pro on the back end and it makes the video easy and it makes, it makes everything easier. And, uh, uh, I guess this would be similar in terms of like, uh, you know, they storyboard movies and things like this, but this is like a really easy way you can do it with an Excel spreadsheet or, uh, you can draw it out, you know, and it's a really useful tool. Wow. That's awesome. Really great. Um, anything else, Kylie, you want to add to content blocks? And I think for me, cause this is more Richard's domain. And I have actually seen our clients and one of our masterminds that we don't have anymore sit there and create a sales video in like 15 minutes, just following the blocks. I mean, it needed work, it needs work, but it was it was there and it made sense and it was compelling. So I love the idea of that structure. For me, my writing is a little more intuitive. Like I get to know who I'm writing to and I'm like, what do I need to say to them right now? And that's it. But I do use those blocks because they're fundamentals to marketing, right? But I don't necessary i'm not smart in the same way that richard is so he's got this whole genius system that is definitely his forte but the one thing i will we're all say, smart in different ways that's very true <laughs> the, the one thing i will say about it is i think that what most people need to work on is the transitions so there's these like beautiful pieces of content but how can i make sure that it it, it flows from idea to idea to idea in a really beautiful concrete way and that kind of goes along with learning hooks. Like, how do I keep attention while I'm moving from this to this? Or it also reminds me of something that Stephen King said, because as a copywriter, we read all these different books, take all these trainings. For me, the most compelling book I ever read was Stephen King's book called On Writing. And one of the things that he said is you want to take two seemingly unrelated ideas and relate them. So that's also another way you can take these different blocks and you can weave them together. He actually, this is like a nerdy fun fact. He actually couldn't sell a single novel until he until he really understood that I, that idea. And then the first one he sold was Carrie and it was like a bestseller, I got a movie. But he was talking about how his wife was working at Dunkin' Donuts and they couldn't afford medicine for their daughter one winter and he had been writing and writing and writing and been rejected, been rejected, been rejected. As soon as he figured out that strategy, that technique, boom, he, what has he written? Like a hundred books or something like that, a hundred best-selling books. And they're all, they, they all play off of that idea. So I think that I never thought about this before. So I'm not going to say I've like taken Richard's content blocks and, and, and busted out on some, on some pet cemetery on it or anything like that. But, but, uh, I actually think it's an interesting idea to play with. Yeah, amazing. So um, uh, there's so much you all can can teach, and I know we're just scratching the surface. But I wanted you to also touch on this idea of, of myths of marketing. Um, I think you have like eight of them or something like that. But um, w w were there any that you're able to just kind of briefly share to give us a taste of what a myth of, of marketing might be? Richard, what about you? Yeah, we, we actually have like 33 myths, oh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, but um, and you can mention our Facebook group later, but there's yeah. uh, two presentations in there. One is the seven myths of marketing and the other is the eighth myth. Okay. And um, they basically came about because I realized uh, there's good news and bad news here. The, the, good, the good news is that uh, the tech is becoming easier and that the strategies that you need to, to succeed as a coach are easier, the, the methods are easier, the 
The bad news is it means that you're actually responsible. The only block is normally you and your mindsets. <laughs> uh, and so what we realize is, is when you first get online, later on it's a little bit different, but when you first get online, actually the things that are blocking you are just whatever's going on in your head and your internal game. So the, the first myth is just what we call the manipulation myth. And we find within our community, uh, this isn't in all communities, but in our community, there's this idea that marketing is manipulative and you know you could go take it to the extreme that it's evil and that uh it just it, it's like a scourge on the world you know and that uh that the creator doesn't want anything to do with marketing because it's pushy and um and we like to take that myth and help to help help our our tribe our community to to see that there's another way and we call it emc it's uh, educational marketing content uh so it's just creating value content and, um, you know, every piece of content you put out, uh, we believe changes consciousness. And so it's, there's a, there's a karma to the, that, that of everything you put out. And so we want to be giving value, whether that person becomes a customer or not. And then we share ways that, um, people can do that in ways that really feels good. And, you know, there's this line, like there's the marketing here and then there's the teaching here. And we like to take that wall between those two and just annihilate that wall and just, just see it as one thing and then give some value up front so that um, the customer knows what to expect and gets the value up yeah, front. Yeah, I 100% um, agree. You know, I um, started to talk about how yeah, some time ago, like marketing is part, like for, for particularly for like spiritual teachers, like marketing is part of your ministry, man. Mm. It's like, you like, we touch so many more people with our market. And in fact, if marketing is successful, it touches way more people, creates more karma than the few, relative few who convert, you know, gosh, 1% conversion, right? Or 10% conversion, my gosh. You know, it's like, what about the other 90 to 99% who didn't convert this time? have they been left in a better place? We mm -hmm. hope so, right? So no, that's, I love that. And um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing um, the other myths as well. And I know it's in the Facebook group. So I wanna just spend a, a last few minutes to make, make sure people know how to, um, you know, what, what, you know, kind of programs and offerings that you all have. So first of all, you know, your, your website, of course, will be below and you have a podcast as well. Um, be sure to check that out, folks. And uh, you have a Facebook group, which um, I think is actually where I first met you all, um, because there were uh, some people I knew in, a, in, in, the, in your Facebook group, and they mentioned it, and um, they got a lot of value out of it. So I'll be sure to link that below. Um, you have a, oh, do you want to say anything about the Facebook group, by the way? You mentioned that there were presentations in there. Yeah. Uh, the Facebook group is called The Conscious Marketer's Path, and we do a live training uh, most weeks we are, we're in there just giving content kind of just like what I just said, we're just trying to give some content and some ideas and it's uh, people who want to do marketing in a different way. And like, like you said, George, they want to make an impact and they, they, they know that if they could get more people in, then they could create the change in other people's lives, you know? Yeah. Awesome. And you have, um, well, of course you have your private clients, which we've talked about. There are some, some big names and, um, but I would imagine you also work with people uh, who, well, I, I actually, no, I, I don't want to assume that. What, so you've got your group programs, you've got your one-on-one. -on -one. Most of the people who are, who are watching or listening to this are, are probably uh, too, too much in the beginning of their, their business to actually work with you all. Um, but uh, let's say somebody is, well, let's talk about two different groups. Let's say somebody is just starting out like they have um, a skill set, maybe they've got some training, maybe they have some experiences they want to share, um, and they're kind of starting a business right now um, that could turn into, you know, group programs, online courses, etc. Um, how would you recommend they engage with you? That's group one. And group two, let's say somebody has been doing it for a while, maybe a couple of years, they already have had dozens or maybe hundreds of clients. Um, they may even have, uh, they, they may have run a couple of small group programs and maybe launched a few online courses. How would you recommend they work with you? Uh, well, I'll just say briefly the first group, you know, Kylie and I run something we call the uh, Conscious Launch Accelerator. And so we, we have the processes that we take people through. We train people in hooks and story and, 
And then um, it's really meant to be an action-based program. I think another myth that I would share is that people think that, that they need another certification or they need, need more knowledge. And really most people are ready and they just need to take the action. And as, as you launch, you learn and you evolve. And so we, we find, we've tried to, as Ky, uh, Kylie, this is your saying, not mine, but she says, we put everything in there that you need and nothing else. <laughs> and so we, we just try to distill it and then we, we wrap that in a really good community experience and you're working directly with us um, on weekly calls. So that's the Conscious Launch Accelerator. On the, the latter one, we have a higher end mastermind group that um, we ran it last year and we're gonna be starting that up again. That would probably be the place Occasionally, we'll find somebody uh, in our one-on-one -on -one or our, our private agency, which is pretty much closed right now. Occasionally, we'll take one client a year, kind of thing, uh, to to add into their. Uh, yeah. So occasionally, we'll, we occasionally we're called and uh, given an assignment, and we're like, okay, we need to do this to help people. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for the work that you do, that you're serving people with such value, whether it's in your podcast, your Facebook group, your website, et cetera, and your programs, of course. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess anything else you want to say before we finish this uh, conversation? I would just say, just to piggyback off what Richard said, you are ready you know, you can do it, you are ready, just take the action and people really need you. I always tell people there's people that are really suffering out there that need you specifically. I think a lot of times people think, oh, anyone can do what I do and it isn't true. So that's what I wanna leave you with, everyone with. That's awesome, thank you for that. Yeah, and Richard, anything, any other parting words for the, the audience? You know, just to figure out what's yours to do, you know, mm -hmm. like not necessarily from the mind, but what you're being called to do, how you're, you're being called to be of service in the world yeah. and then follow that because the universe has your back on that and it'll, it'll create the magic for you. Um, so cr create from that state of presence or that state of, of knowing that you've got to do this thing, whether it makes sense to anybody else mm. out there or not, just go for it. Kind of like Kylie said, you're ready. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Well, um, folks, the links are below. Check out the, Facebook group, the podcast, their website, um, and maybe one of the group programs might be might be a really great fit for you. So thank you both for being here. Really, really great to connect and uh, looking forward to, um, you know, let's get out there and, and do more, uh, bring conscious marketing out there more. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, George.